you have probably seen in your past a uh, music box, which is a little wooden box with a lid on it, and inside there's a mechanism that you crank up, and when the spring unwinds, it plays a set tune over and over and over until the spring runs out. Well, I've been given this little mechanism, which is a hand-cranked version of that, and I wanted to take you through basically how it's made and how I mounted it on this block here, and also take you through the process of, of refashioning this because I do have a larger version of this, which has uh, you know a wider range of notes that it, that can be played, and so I put it on a, a larger, more solid block, and I think it sounds better. But I'm not sure if it's just because it's a different mechanism or because it sounds better on a solid block. This one's been hollowed out by me. And so I'm going to I'm going to record a little tune on this and then make it uh make another block for it and then mount it on and record the same tune and see if it sounds any different at all. And I'll just keep this one around because this is a this is a nice little I mean it was the first attempt and um even though it's not very refined inside, you see how crudely I cut it out. I still like I still like the way it's how compact it is. So, to begin with, to preface this whole thing, just I want to give you an idea about how it's made. And I'll go into detail. I'll bring the camera closer to see these things I'm talking about. But basically, inside of this mechanism, there are little tines that when you pluck them, each tine is a little bit longer than the other. So you plug the smaller one, it makes a high-pitched tone and at the bottom end you pluck the lower the longer one and it's a lower pitched tone and depending on the quality um, most of these are in tune <laughs> they do have a tendency to sound a little off and so some of the feedback I've received from previous performances on 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 the internet is that they sound kind of creepy and I think maybe that's because people are people are used to hearing tunes out of these things that are perfect, or they're they're, they're used to hearing tunes that are perfect. And when you hear one off note, it it puts your puts your ear on edge and it makes you think that there's something wrong. So, especially with with common tunes, uh, it can put people off. And so I have not actually tried to make any common tunes on this. All I do is, is compose my own. And, uh, and so that, there, that might be the other com the, the combination of the fact that I'm, uh, I'm just sort of creating things out of my mind and maybe I just make creepy things. I don't know. But the idea is you have a strip of paper and you run it through here and uh, if you ran a, a, a strip of paper through that has no holes in it, then it would make no music. But if you plucked, if you poked a little hole in here, in a line with one of those tines, when you crank this roller here, it draws it across a little plucker, and it it plucks that one note that you've indicated on this on the tape. So. I'll go through the composition process. Obviously, I'm not a composer, so I can only give you a, a, an amateur's view of it. But hopefully, you find this interesting. Um, these things, I have never seen one of these things taken apart. And I was hoping I could actually you know, create one myself with just the basic pieces. Um, I have not been able to find them. So it, when I call it a DIY music box, it's because I I did install it myself onto this block. But I this was purchased, <laughs> and this was purchased. Although I have tried to to replicate this, the the cardstock kind of has to be exactly. Uh, uh, calibrated to this roller or else it doesn't work. So you're, you're kind of at the mercy of the people who created this whole system to provide you with a little puncher and a little 
strip of paper and the thing to play it on. But once you have these, they're great. Um, it's, I guess it's sort of like, I mean, I, I, I look at them kind of like I look at my electronic instruments where if there's no electricity one day, then I can't play my instruments. And maybe there will be no more paper one day, so I can't <laughs> play this one either. So it's a, a very uh, in the moment a creation, and uh, I think that works very well for the internet, for for YouTube. From my point of view, for this collection of videos that uh, YouTube wants to call a channel, I uh, it, it it's all in the moment and. Even though there's a backlog of things, I'm sure people don't go and, and look at them all. They just they, they, they watch the thing as you are watching now and then move on to the next. So hopefully you stay for the next 10, 15 minutes. I don't know how long this is going to be while I demonstrate. This is the larger version I created for my large mechanism. And I'll be making a duplicate of that for the smaller mechanism in this video. See I put a megaphone on the side and underneath you can see where I just made a little chamber for the music to resound in and round up the other side you can see a series of gears and a little pinch roller that pulls the tape along. And when I get a little closer, you can see these little, these little nubs that will pluck the tines as the tape goes through, catches on the, catches on the little holes that I punched in the tape. give you a little closer view of what's going on inside as those pluckers do their job. And as I did this, I realized I should probably make a large version for educational purposes. This is a representation of what it looks like on the inside of the box. It's basically just some metal tines that have been squished together between two pieces of wood with these bolts so that the short makes a higher pitch and the long makes a low pitch. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's vibrating all the washers and screws on my work desk. It's very low. So instead of a finger plucking them, I have crafted out of wood a little representation of automatic pluckers. <laughs> They're basically just made out of very thin wood that I put through the laser cutter and I put it through laser cutter so that I could make them each the same size. And there's a, a ramped side that'll gently pluck and the hooked side will catch the tape as it goes through. So I'm not, this hasn't been uh, finely engineered. I'm just placing them gently against each one so that you can see. Let me just pull up a little closer. But instead of a crank on this end, I'm just going to use uh, a piece of cardboard that I've also cut on the laser cutter. Yeah.
Dong, dong, dong. You get it. Now, back to the main dialogue. So, I wanted to show a few minutes of the composition pro process because I'm, I'm not a trained composer. I'm just learning as I go. And this process makes it a little more difficult or more challenging or interesting, I guess, because this sheet doesn't hold every note as you would, you know, if you were looking at a piano, you'd see, I want this one and this one and this one because there's missing notes. It goes C, D, and it's missing E and F, and then goes to G, and then more or less hits two octaves, and it's miss is it missing some up here too? G, A, yeah, there's there's no G up here. So, so um, I guess I keep that in mind, but because I haven't learned composition, uh, I'm basically going by what it looks like on here and what it sounds like when I play it. So I I hit a few and then I run it through and see if that sounds good. And then I hit a few more, or punch a few more, and run it through and see if it sounds good. So that's the process. And um, I've started already kind of penciling in some notes Just like that. All right, so there they are, my little notes. And then I will punch them using this little punch that they gave me. And you can see that it has a little, so it's pretty easy, it's kind of fun. It leaves little dots of paper on my floor but that is, it's like do, you know, of, the, of art. <laughs> it's the evidence that art has been made. Doink. Right? So then, and then we go. And test it out to see if it sounds good little flourish at the beginning of everything as uh, as this slanted edge goes through all the, t the tines. I kind of like that. Now um, I'm tempted to uh, to just pull it on through but I have a feeling that would kind of ruin it so fast forward. Yeah. It's lengthy. It's a lengthy process, but seems to work for me. So that's uh, that's the beginning of a composition, and it doesn't sound like much. It was kind of an interesting little melody. Um, I'll just keep I'll just keep sort of composing, and uh, I'll show you this when it's finished. All right, so. Here's the composition as I have composed it. And uh, let's see what it sounds like. Okay, I already see it goes do 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 and I wanna go do 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 I wanna put one right there. Ooh, I don't like that last. What is that? That's a that's a darn old G. I don't want that G there. 
I want to leave this. I want to cut this out. So what do you do after you already cut a hole? How do you make it gone? You take one of these little suckers up oh, oh, there. Take one of these and stick it back in. No, you use tape. Haha. <laughs> of course, a matching tape dispenser will never go amiss. And uh. I just kind of put it in slanty ways on both sides. This will take up a little bit of space, you know, between the rollers. So it'll sound different. It will sound different. Best policy is to never make a mistake. But I did. I did. I made one. So. Now you'll know what it sounds like when I make a mistake and how it affects the, the roll through. And what did I want? I wanted one there. Yeah, let's put one right there. Did I show you the little crosshairs on here? That way you know exactly, you line up those little crosshairs with the crosshairs on here. Right, that's where I want it. That's where I got it. Okay. Now this will just be this is this is a sketch. This is a sketch. Okay. Kind of like that. <clears throat> There's a few sour notes in there, <laughs> but uh, so that's that's a demonstration of how that works. Now I will show you how I made this block. Oh, look, there's some there's some notes stuck in the bottom here. Well, here's a nice piece of wood. It's got some nice grain on it, I think, and it's. Seems to be okay. There's some knots in it, but I'm just going to take off this end of it from here to here. Maybe less. But I need to plane it first because it's rough. So. My idea was that this will fit over that. And if, if 
I think it's okay, if I think it works, I might drill a hole this way to make it a little more directional. But first I want to see if this actually sounds interesting. Now all that's left to do is to run the same tune through the mechanism on different blocks of wood and see how it sounds. Good, bad, better, best, I don't know. I don't know about you, but I prefer the sound that this one made. Uh, I think the hole does make a small difference. I can't put the wood back in the hole, so the hole is staying. And I, I think the old, the old block had some strange spots where it resonated in a weird way, and I didn't really like it. It did have an interesting quality, but this one I like, it's more solid. So I'm going to sand this one down, put some tongue oil on it, and let the tongue oil cure. And then this one will be ready for, for more performances for you on YouTube. Oh, I didn't explain. Just to describe what's going on. Uh, I used a one inch bit to get this straight hole in here. And uh, in the other one, in the larger one, or actually they're probably both the same size now, I used this bit and that's why you saw that sort of ribbing on the inside. Oh, actually, it wasn't this one. It was... It was this one. 
So yeah, just drilling in each one of these little edges will just carve out one step. But I thought I'd try this one instead just to see if a, if a straight hole made any difference. Now, it looks pretty smooth. There is a divot right here. But it would take a lot of sanding to get rid of that divot. So I'm going to make it a feature instead of a mistake. And now I'm going to put some tongue oil on there. And the thing about tongue oil is that I bought this about six years ago and I haven't barely even made a dent in it. And the reason why there's so much of it left after that many years is because it takes just so little to cover the wood. I don't really need to do it on the inside, but I will. This is going to be a process of several, several days because it takes a long time for this to cure. And you don't want to just put one, one coat. So you put one coat on and then you let it cure and you put another coat on. Let it cure. And with each successive coat, the darkness of the grain comes out a little bit more and uh, the oil soaks into the lightness of the grain and makes it a little bit translucent so it's really pretty and I've there's there's other kinds of tongue oil there's tongue oil varnish this is hundred percent pure tongue oil it's actually the all oil there's other stuff made by Minwax which is um, tongue oil dissolved into varnish and that goes on a lot faster and you you see a lot of you know it, it hardens up pretty quickly so there's a lot more immediate satisfaction but it doesn't uh, I don't think it looks as translucent as as it does when you when you put the real 100% stuff on it but that might just be my perception. And unfortunately, <laughs> the difference, I mean, it's a minor difference, and the difference is so small, I, it doesn't really show up very well on the internet. So there have been things, I, I of course have some of that Minwax stuff and put it on other things. But um, but it's, it doesn't show up on the internet, on the camera. Maybe if I had a better camera. That's what I need. I need a better camera, and then I can show off all my woodworking skills even more. Also, this responds well to... pretty intense pressure because we really are just kind of working it into between those cells in the wood but I'll finish this first coat for the camera and then show it to you and that will be good enough because it's really pretty the way it is right now. I think you will agree. I'm even going to do the bottom side. This was going to be the top side because look at this knot. Isn't that a beautiful knot? I was going to make that the top. 
but I decided to make this the top because I like I like that watery kind of grain. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe you can even see how it's soaking in. Really pretty. Golly gee whiz. Oh yeah, the reason why, I don't know if you noticed when I was planing, but it was difficult to get a smooth slice because of this knot's here and I just, there's a lot of chatter. It looks, it doesn't look great. It doesn't look great. So, that'll be on the bottom and only you will see this. No one else knows it's there. It's a secret between you and me. Another good thing about 100% pure tongue oil is that it's it's basically like putting olive oil on your skin. I mean, I can slather my hands in this stuff and it's not going to soak in and give me cancer the way the other the other stuff might. probably will with all those benzenes and VOCs and junk. So, there we go. One day, next week, that will be screwed onto that and uh, it'll be finished. Thank you for watching this.